It is Manchester Derby time, a fixture that we oh. all look forward to. And I know that you have an opinion on this, so do get involved. Use the hashtag Weekend Warm Up and we will try and read out as many of your comments as possible. But let's talk about the Manchester Derby. Look, we saw the Premier League table at the top of the show. If United win, they go level on points with Manchester City. So what does that tell us about <laughs> both of these team seasons? Yeah, I guess starting with United. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I think even the ardent Man United fan would say they're not in Man City's class just yet. But the league table does, you know, go against that because, like you said, teams it can go joint points with them. So it's a great incentive for Man U to beat them. Not that you need it when it's a Manchester derby. But the performance from Man City against Crystal Palace like last week was a shocker. It was one of their worst I've seen for quite a while, which is unlike them. Maybe they had one eye on the Champions League and then that, this game coming up at the weekend. Um, if I was Man United and I was Oli and his players, players, I would be very fearful of Man City losing their last game mm. because they're going to have a point to prove. And I always feel, when I watch a Guardiola side, I always feel as though he gets off on the big games and there's not many bigger than this. Leroy, well, the other thing to add to that is that they won't want to, this early in the campaign, relatively speaking, mm. lose touch with the two teams above them. Um, so that puts an added pressure onto the result for Manchester City. Look, it certainly does. You know, um, obviously Liverpool and Chelsea, you know, just a uh, couple of points, Liverpool, five points, Chelsea. But I, a lot of people say the table doesn't lie, but it, it, on, on this occasion, it's lying. <laughs> it's lying. lying. It's lying. lying. You're all lying <laughs> because there's a gulf uh, between Man City and Man United at the moment. Yeah, in any one-off game, anything could happen tomorrow, but there's a massive gulf between the two sides. I think everybody recognises that. Um, and from Man United's perspective, this is a massive game because they can afford just to draw it. And people will come out saying, that's a great result. Well done. Brilliant. They cannot afford to lose this. And then the manner of the defeat is going gonna, is gonna to be important as well if they do lose the game. Right. So is is, 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 is the golf, the golf in squads, or the standard of manager? The, the golf, look, I don't know what happens behind the scenes. And sometimes it's unfair. We just, we just go by what we see, Don. We think that tactically, mm. well, he doesn't quite get it as, as, as right as he should do. There's a golf in the approach, I think, to the games. Right. I, However, I think that, go on. sorry, you said he doesn't always quite get it right, mm -hmm. but in this particular fixture, he actually has won the majority of the games. Yeah. In five of them, he's mm -hmm. won more of them than Pep has, which then, does that throw in another, um, you know, a, another point in that he can get wins in this derby he and can. he's shown it in the past? He can, seems because his squad, his squad is built to get results when he plays counter-attack in football. And f for a bizarre reason, because you all look at Man United players, you look at like pe people like Paul Pogba and mm. Fred and McTominay, they can all handle the ball. They can take care of the ball, especially Pogba. But their best performances have been when they've been playing the likes of Tottenham and, and playing the likes of uh, Man City. When they play counter-attack in football, they sit in their shape. Defensively, they're solid. And then what it does, it scares the opposition. We've often seen when Leicester play against Man City, Jamie Vardy getting away and springing in behind. You see it when Marcus Rashford and Martial get springing in and running forward. Sometimes it destroyed Man United, uh, Man City, excuse me. So this is the fixture where I think it's a massive test for Ollie's, I wouldn't say brain power, but football knowledge because plan. And I imagine Pep would be desperate for Man United to play three at the back because his out balls then are Carl Walker and João Cancelo, two players that can handle the ball, especially. So that's the out ball. That's something that Spurs didn't get a handle on last week. So for Oli, he's going to try and second guess what team Pep's going to go with and what mm. system he's going to go with. And as we know, that's Good hard luck enough. With that. Good luck with that. <laughs> so that's where your sort of that's where your knowledge comes in. And maybe just in this game, you revert back to type and you go right. Let's not try and get involved in a football match with Man City. Let's not even try. Territorial will sit off and we'll wait until we get possession and then bang, use their pace. The contradiction to that is. Is it going to be Ronaldo and Cavani? Exactly. So <laughs> yeah. it's it's one of them where you go, what's he going to pick? What's he going to do? Mm. So, I think it's a really interesting fixture from the perspective that Don's just touched on there, Lou, where that both managers are going to be double guessing the system because Oli went three at the back uh, last week against Spurs, which he hasn't really done before. Mm -hmm. It's a great dividend. He normally plays four at the back. Pep, as we know, has got a multitude of systems within systems. Mm -hmm. How do you think they're going to set up? Well, I think Man United have got to play with, with, with three or five at the back, however you want to say, because they, they got a re result playing that way. They started like that in, in midweek in, in Europe. I know that you know, there's obviously injuries and they had to change, but you just feel that United has to just build on that performance against Tottenham in, in the Premier League. From Pep's point of view, we know how Man City are going to play. He's not guessing how Man United are going to play. He doesn't care. <laughs> he only cares about how Man City are going to play. And we know how they're going to play because they know if they impose their game on anybody playing anywhere, they're going to win the game. So... 
Man United to play with three, it's about the personnel. And Don's absolutely right. Because the reason why United do so well is because the likes of looking back on the games which they've won, and Rashford and Martial's played well against, because they are lightning quick. Yeah. Cavani and Ronaldo, they're not, they're not slow, but I don't think they want to play on the counter-attack. And how much possession will they get in that final third? Because we know when they get good possession in the opposition's final third, they can tear teams apart. But how often will they get into that position with Man City? And it's not like, it's not like Oli can try and look forward to the game and think, well, I'll put Martial if he's fit on the bench. I'll put Rashford if he's fit on the bench and we'll try and do something and use their pace. They could be four down by yeah. then. Mm. Well, so it's could, tricky. could Ronaldo be the difference in this fixture? Because he has be been. Yes. I mean, hasn't mm. he just shown that? Even against I mean, Atlanta. It seems I've heard so many people, um, ex-pros, pundits, saying Ronaldo's the problem. And it, it, it staggers me when I hear that. Yeah. Because how can this man be the problem? Because without Ronaldo, Man United would be way off the top four. They'd be sitting bottom of the group in the Champions League. They'd be at the Champions League competition, probably. And his goals have been sensational. And at times, he's kept Oli in a job. Can Ooh, we reword that question? I'm going to say. Yeah. Can we reword it and <laughs> yeah. say, Ronaldo's a problem for the way that Oli currently wants to play? I think Ronaldo's a problem for United without the ball. I don't think he is. No, I think, you, I think he is without the ball. I honestly do. Uh, I think that with the, with the ball, when it, I look exceptional. He's a genius in around the box. Some of these goals are magnificent. But when you want to defend as a team and the trigger... He is your centre forward. He doesn't yeah. want to know. He does not want to know. And compared to Firmino last week, you know, so you know, you're saying like, if your centre forward doesn't want to press, what do you do? Well, you drop off. Is it because he hasn't been asked to press? I think, so it, depends. No, I think it's because he it saves himself. See the... I think he's 36 years old. You know, so he saves himself through games. There's been big periods of the games where he hasn't had a touch. Can I, throw those, can, can I just throw a little yeah. spanner in there? It depends mm. on how you see the game. Mm. I commentated on Roma AC Milan last weekend on Sunday, mm -hmm. and Zlatan played. He's 40. And they're giving him a new contract. He's going to be 41. And he's still leading the line by using his brain. He's not running around like a 19-year-old, like a closing everyone down, because he doesn't want to do it. So Ronaldo's the same when I watch him. And you've got Ronaldo in your team. Build a team around you that can close down for him. But can you build a team around Ronaldo? Because is he able to play that many games in the Premier League and then in other Seems competitions at his age? He'll play every single game. But, Don, yeah. the problem is that United, where are they in the table? They're, what, sixth, seventh, wherever they are? They were going up against like Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea. Every single one of their players can run. And so if you're trying to build a team around a 36-year-old who scores magnificent goals, but you can't press as a team, you've got a problem. You're always going to be behind the curve. Because that, those teams, Liverpool, all their teams press. Man City press, Chelsea press. Mm. So, so you, you are behind the curve. You're trying to build a team around Ronaldo. Look, he's a magnificent player, but they've got a problem with him out of possession of the ball. So the question then, Don, is we've got his goals... How do we convert his goals into wins as opposed to needing his goals just for draws? Because that seems to be what's happening at the moment. Yeah, I think it's quite easy. You make sure your back four or back five starts keeping clean sheets. We saw against Leicester, yeah. the back four that they played with, mm. shipped four. Oli went into the next game with exactly the same back four, conceded five against Liverpool. So that's why he went with three at the back against Tottenham, because he's recognised now that a lot of those back players playing against the back, back four are not having good starts to the season. Harry Maguire's way off it. wan is a little bit shy of confidence, I would imagine. Varane's got one or two injuries. Lindelof's got one or two injuries as well. Luke Shaw's doing OK. But as a, as a collective, as a five, including your goalkeeper, the lack of clean sheets is alarming. You, you, you can't play two holding midfield players and concede nine goals in two games. No, uh, that's absolutely right. And, and look, these, they're good players. I think Matomne's going to be a very good player. Fred is a, de a decent player as well. But again... I'm comparing other teams in the league. Are United going to overtake the likes of Liverpool, Man City, with Fred McTominay in midfield? I don't think so. Well, we're going to continue this conversation in a mm. moment. City are, of course, the dominant force in Manchester at the moment. But if you're talking historically, it's a whole different story. Carl Walker is back with us and at the Old Trafford Museum. And United will be hoping to add some trophies to it soon. Yes, they will. And I've made it to the Theatre of Dreams, a.k.a. Old Trafford. And I'm in the museum where plenty of Manchester United fans' memories are locked right here. There's plenty of trophies as well, including these three, the famous treble from 1999. Now, we have to talk about the sheer amount of trophies in this museum. Manchester United have won 21st Division trophies. 13 of those are Premier Leagues. They've won 12 FA Cups, 5 League Cups... 
and three European trophies. Two of those are Champions League trophies, and this one is a special one because this man right here, the man who's currently in charge of Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he cemented his spot as a club legend when he scored that goal in injury time in 1999. Now, we have to say... Oli has had some critics as of recent, but tomorrow he comes up against a man in Pep Guardiola that he has a great record against. Yes, Pep has lost more games against Oli Gunnar Solskjaer than he has against any other Premier League manager. So Manchester United fans, they will be getting excited. And you can literally feel the buzz around the museum because fans have travelled across already. And tomorrow there will be 76,000 fans here at Old Trafford all hoping to to get bragging rights against friends and family that support the opposite team. Now, it's not just about the coaching staff. It's not just about the players. It is about those fans. And one man that knows it, one man that will be hoping to bring some excitement to those fans is Bruno Fernandes. And he sat down with us this week to talk to us about what it's like to play in a Manchester derby. It's a big game. Uh, we know what, what this means for, for all City, for our fans and for ourselves too, because it's, it's a big game. We want to win. We want to, to give, to give uh, something to enjoy to our fans and at the same time end this, this difficult month with a, with a great win. At the moment it's a gap because they are, <laughs> they are in front of us. That is the gap uh, we have from now for now, but uh, we want we want to win to win the game to to make that that gap disappear and try to help them to win the game and try try to make uh, Manchester United bigger than than City. He's on an Old Trafford hat trick here, Mo Salah, and he captures the moment. The scoreline is extraordinary. We are here to make the fans happy. We are here to make the club bigger and. Uh, and, and be the best we, we can. And, and that, day, that day was not enough, and we know that. And we give the response against Tottenham. Uh, and luckily for us, after Tottenham, we don't win against uh, Atalanta, but um, we have a chance now to, to give a response again. Bruno Fernandes looking for Ronaldo! It's a goal. One of the big hitters delivers. I saw Cristiano playing for so long time, so I know I know how, how he play, I know how his how his movement. He's scoring goals, great moments for us, important moments for the team, and and this is is what Cristiano is is doing from for for the last 15, 17 years. So we we all expect that, and uh, we know at uh, at any moment he can he can be there to help us to to win a game. I think the quality we have on the on the team is is really high. Now people demand more and more because of the players we have on the team. They expect more and more, and that is, is natural. We we all know that. Uh, the boss knows that. But but still, I think the team the team is improving a lot. As as we said uh, last week after the Tottenham game, we have more points now than uh, than last season at this moment. Football is is strange. Change at every time. Change it at every game. And, uh, and we never know. No one was expecting City and Liverpool to, to lose points last, last week. So that's, that's football and, and that's why it's football is really beautiful. doesn't matter how, how much you spend or how much your players cost or how much they, they earn to, to win games. That, that doesn't win games for themselves. That, that is not enough and then you can see that. So uh, it's really good. That's, as I said, football is beautiful because of that and I think the Premier League is the most attractive one because it's, it's the most closer one from the, uh, you could say, from the smaller teams to the big six, as you say, in England. We should forget every time we, we, we win or lose a game, we should forget straight away and start thinking on the next one because football is about this. History doesn't exist in football because if you win one game and you lose the next one, everyone will forget we, we, you win the, the one the one before. And before that and after that, it will be always like that. So we, will, we have to carry on quick and we have to forget the games and the next one is always the more important. Bruno Fernandes ahead of the Manchester derby, which is our headliner game uh, today. Don and Leroy have selected their starting <laughs> 11s. Mm. Very interesting. JJ, yes. this is why <laughs> I will never, ever be a manager. Because I'm going to ask Leroy, yeah. would you ever consider playing Marcus Rashford, wing-back, Martial, wing-back, in State the City? Deal with that. <laughs> Go on, I deal would, with that. I would. I'll tell you why, Don, because if you remember... 
when Alex Ferguson was manager of Man United, David Beckham used to go and play right back at times. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Because it's a really good place to go and attack from. So you definitely, I think you could be a manager. Lower league. But, uh, <laughs> Article. 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 You'd be, you'd, you'd, you'd cane it up there. But I've, I've picked this side for Man, for Man United, and obviously Varane is out, which is massive, massive. Mm. But I've put Harry Maguire in the middle, and there's a reason for that, and we'll, we'll talk about that during the analysis. Sure, Bae is in there, there's a doubt about Lindelof, but I'm sure if he's fit, he'll come in for, for Bae. But I honestly think that Oli will, will turn to this. Look, you, I think you've got to play Cavani and Ronaldo. They've got to keep developing that partnership because it's such a positive... I'd, I'd love to be a fly on the wall, Leroy, mm. when Oli and his coaching staff are going through the analysis, what Seema touched on before, and their past results mm -hmm. and playing counter-attack in football. Yeah. But yet, he might go with Ronaldo and Cavani. So how do they get up the pitch quick enough? I think, I think they stay in the game, though. Right. I think it's, it's about staying in the game first half, maybe an hour, and then look to make changes. That's when maybe Rashford... You know, if Martial's fit, they come into the, the equation. Greenwood, you stay in the game against Man City, which they obviously they didn't do against Liverpool. Mm. What about your City side? Because, look, I've, the one doubt for me, and I've been saying it for weeks, Don, yeah. is, is this guy. I don't think he's doing enough for me. What do you think? I agree. I think when you look at Man City, who mm. are a pass inside, they've now got a ball dribbler. They've got someone who dribbles with the ball at his feet. Mm. So it, get, it goes a little bit against the grain. I mean, where I think he's had a little bit of result, no disrespect to Laporte, who got sent off last week, yeah. they've now got their best partnership, in my opinion, of John Stones and Diaz. So those two will play. I didn't have... I had Bernardo, uh, Bernardo Silva in there, and it was a little bit tricky, because normally you'd put Kevin De Bruyne in your midfield in a game like mm. this, but he only... Played a little while against Crystal Palace last week. I think he came off the bench. And then same in midweek, he got minutes. Or he started against Palace, got taken off, and then played 15 minutes midweek in the Champions League. So I think that's where and what Pep's going to do. But maybe, as I said, De Bruyne for Bernardo Silva. And okay. Sterling to start as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, you're trying to second guess. I mean, it, it, it could be Riyad Mahrez. I mean, if you, yeah. if, you, if you swap Riyad Mahrez for Raheem Sterling, you think that's decent. Yeah. I would imagine Phil Foden, he's been playing as a false nine of late, so I would imagine Pep will carry on with that. So I think if that's the two teams, it'll be all about Man City's midfield and how dominant they are on the ball, trying to get in behind Man United's couldn't midfield. You, couldn't you swap Mahrez for Grealish, dribbler for dribbler? However, one seems to have a lot more end product than the other, Leroy. Yeah, at the moment, look, he's sticking with him because he's paid a lot of money for him and yeah. he needs time to settle. And I totally understand that. But he needs... I would still play him. But I think you you need to demand from them. Like, this is the time. It's the 10 games into the season. Mm -hmm. We need to start seeing a bit more. Right, if you're a Manchester United fan, you might want to look away because I've got some stats for you oh, and they're see. not very good. Oh, see, that's Right, nice. let me t <laughs> just talk us through this, Leroy, because if you're Man United and you're ranked 20th for tackles, mm -hmm. 15th for distance run and 15th for presses, mm -hmm. what does that tell you about this Massive side? concern. Massive concern because, you know, the top team should be right at the top of that. You know, uh, tackles 20th last, that suggests they're not getting close to people. And United have always been an aggressive thing. It's a fitness thing. Distance runs suggests a fitness thing. Presses, you know, Don, I'm talking yeah. about, you know, where do you start the press? Is you know, it desire they're... as well? Look, I never want to question the player's desire because I think that's a hard thing to measure. People always say, oh, he's got no passion. And that's a really difficult thing to say. You could say it's fitness. Mm -hmm. You could say it's organisation because where do you start the press? What you need to do, as Don would know, mm. it's not the guy who's running to go and close you down, Seema. Don will run and close you and then... JJ will come and tack you and take the ball off you. So it's about it's the knock on effect, isn't it? The knock on effect. If you're, if you're slightly out of your shape, mm. yeah. those numbers could be slightly down because it's a knock on effect, as we saw when we've done mm. the analysis on the Liverpool game last week. Mm. Out, out of those three stats, though, Leroy, I, I mean, I totally agree with the top two. If the team isn't set up and designed to press, then being 15th might be neither here nor there, no? Well, being 15th and being losing points in the way that they did to, to Liverpool is a big concern because you, you put these all together by using your eyes as well. And they all collate and they all suggest that United need to do better at that. You know, if they're to move forward as a team, and it's not about personnel, because every time, I, you know, if Man United don't, well, I say, hey, fans say, no, we need to sign in, we need to sign in. Well, they've got a magnificent squad. Mm -hmm. They need to do some work on the training ground to... to uh, it's one of to, them, I think, sure I think that, that right. one there, uh, those three stats, mm. can be misleading. You know, if you're winning 3-0 against Tottenham and you're cruising, you're not exactly going to be pressing yeah, and running around and closing down. So mm. I think you've got to judge each sort of game Mm. on what your eyes see, but those two for sure would be a worry. I mean, just got to say, uh, and I know it's a little bit of a sidebar, and he won't get one, 
But those two passes from Carl Walker should actually get yeah, assists. Exactly. Yeah, this is, yeah, <laughs> exactly. The pass before the pass, JJ, as, you, as we all know. Uh, talking about I want a T-shirt, mate. The pass before the pass. The pass before the pass, yeah. I want a, I want a T-shirt. Sell. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> sell. Next manager of Hartlepool, that'll sell as well. <laughs> uh, this, I'll tell you what it is selling. This Ronaldo Cavani up front. I think we had to show you know, their partnership and what it did to the team. I'm going to pause it there. And the effect that having two people in the box does for a centre-forward. Well, because if you play, you play this through slowly. But Leroy, look how many Tottenham players are trying to mark Cavani and Ronaldo. That's yeah. what they do because they play tight and they play close together. Mm -hmm. You know, you can throw a blanket on that one, two, three, four, five, six Tottenham players, all scared stiff because if it lands to Ronaldo, goal. Absolutely. And Don, the reason I'm playing this slowly is because Ronaldo's just had a shot. Cavani's won the second ball. And there's a rule, again, in football that sometimes you don't score off the first attack. It's maybe the second attack, the third attack. And I'll play this through at the right. But this was, the, set, the I think, the third attack, and it was absolutely outstanding. Everybody's spoken about it. It is genius. Um, I'm the only person on the pitch, I think, who could pull this off, and I, I include Cavani in that as well, is Ronaldo. Um, I just thought this was wonderful. It's just such a great ball, isn't it? The That's ball. Ronaldo's run these days. Mm. Very rarely does he go across the near post. He's always pulling away on the angle. And then what you can never take away from someone like Ronaldo is his technique. No. You know when that lands on the laces, he's going to hit the target and score. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is... we picked this one because this, I think Ronaldo and Cavani are going to be operating against Man City. And, but, you know, and the, but they need to produce this sort of, of play. They need to stay... Cavani does work hard and he fills holes. He, he becomes a midfield player out of possession. He does. I, I've done that role at Everton when I played as a false number nine. Mm -hmm. And you, you stop Man United's deep-line midfield player getting on the ball. Absolutely. Drop and, into your shape. And the reason I said that, because they won the ball high at the pitch. We saw Crystal Palace get a result. You know, Conor Gallagher nicks the ball. And he, that's what United have to do. They need to nick the ball. Look, they're only attacking with two or three. The rest of the team are in good shape. But if they get in this sort of situation, you know that Ronaldo can, can deliver and you know that Cavani can finish. I mean, this, again, this is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. But they need to get in that situation as often as possible. All right, all right, all right, all right.